All right, so let's start manufacturing our gear assembly. So like we discussed in class, my recommendations for making your gear assembly are to 3D print the pegs, use the laser engraver for the gears themselves, and then use the CNC and or general handiwork to cut out the base. Uh, here's how we would go ahead and actually make the peg a 3D printed object. So we do need to start in Inventor and we're gonna open that part. So we will navigate to our OneDrive, we will find it, and we can go ahead and open that on up. Remember, it should be named Peg. And in case you forgot, it should look like this. There we go. So this is our friendly little peg. So when we are saving this to 3D print it, we're going to need to save it as what's called an STL file. STL stands for stereolithography. You don't necessarily need to remember that, but you do need to remember that 3D printers need STLs. So we're going to go ahead to file and we are going to go over here to export and we're going to export it as a CAD format file. And then down here in the drop down where it says save as type, we're going to click and we're going to go all the way down to the bottom. It should say STL file. Again, go ahead and name it as your last name peg, save it to your OneDrive and click save. And then we can go ahead and in our files, we can move that onto our flash drive. So right over here, flash drive. Now you would go ahead and come over to the 3D printer computer. You would plug in your flash drive. And on the 3D printer computer, you're gonna go ahead and open one of three softwares. Right now I'm sitting at the MakerBot, so I'm gonna open up MakerBot Print. I will also show you how to use Ultimaker and Athenia. MakerBot Print should just be a desktop application. And then you will add your file. So here we are, and I'm gonna click on this project panel button where it has a little folder icon, and I'm going to click on the plus to add my models. I'm gonna find that model in my flash drive. I'm gonna open it up. Now when I open it, there is a good chance that the thing itself is super tiny. Uh, that is often because when we save our STLs, it saves them in millimeters. Um, when we were working in inches or vice versa, uh, whatever the case may be, we usually have to scale it. So on all of our programs, there is some kind of scale button, might look like a small box and a big box or a box with an arrow. We're going to scale it though. Now, if we remember our total height for our thing should be, uh, what was that, 15 millimeters and it's radiator or our diameter, sorry, at the roundest point is 20. So looking at this, I'm seeing a two and I'm seeing a 1.5. So I'm just actually gonna go ahead and assume that this should be 20 and that it is currently 1 tenth the size. I do wanna make sure I've got uniform scaling selected so that way all three axes, the X, the Y, and the Z do scale proportionally. And there we are. So it is scaled and it is now the correct size. Uh, as I'm doing this, if I were to print it like this where it's on its side, that's going to waste a lot of support material and a lot of time. So let's rotate that or orient it so it's in a better position to 3D print. So that looks good to me. You can play around with which way you need to rotate it to make sure it is in the best orientation. We will need two of these. So once I have it, I should be able to copy it and paste it very easily. And then I can go ahead and arrange my build plate and it should put them in what the printer thinks is going to be a good orientation to print. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I might need to find my printer because for some reason it's not connecting, but that will actually say print. Um, there we go. Once our printer is connected, I did have to actually plug it into my computer. Uh, you should see it up here as the MakerBot replicator, so we're going to select this one. Now, the really nice thing about the MakerBots is that when you select it, you do get to view a little camera view, uh, so you can kind of watch your print as it's printing, but since you're also going to be sitting right here, that works too. When you hit that print button, it's going to go ahead and start activating the machine. You can probably hear that in the background. You can also see over here, it's moving the print head. And you can see that it's now giving me a time estimate. To print these two pieces, the estimate is about 34 minutes. 
Now, whatever time this says, I do want to add about five to 10 minutes to it. So I would say probably 40 to 45 minutes to print these two. Um, just because, again, it takes time to activate the printer for everything to warm up, and then there might be a time discrepancy. So remember that when you are printing, you do need to make sure that you are staying here the whole time and watching the print job as it prints to make sure that nothing malfunctions. Now the second type of 3D printer that we're going to set this print shop up on is going to be our Affinia. These, these 3D printers are located in the lab and they are the little white boxes that are sitting on the tables near the laser printer. So for this, we're going to be working in Affinia Studio and you could see it was a desktop application, but right here when I double clicked on it, it's asking me for a password. And if I click on that, it's probably not going to work the way that I want it to. Since I am an administrator, I can enter this password. Uh, but for y'all as students, we will make a workaround so that you do not encounter that. So this is what Affinia Studio looks like, and these are what the Affinia printers look like. And again, they are chilling in the lab. So once we get in this software, we're going to first come over here to the build icon so that we can go to our build menu. I'm going to similarly click the plus sign, just like I did in MakerBot. Same symbol, different spot, uh, and we're going to add our 3D model. Now again, this one's on my flash drive, so I can locate that and I can go ahead and load my STL. And just like with my MakerBot, my STL is super, super tiny. So I can go ahead and I can scale that. Now on Affinia, they have this nifty tool wheel up here in the corner where all of our tools live. And just like with our MakerBot, we've got a small square and a big square. And as we hover over it, sure enough, that is our scale tool. So I can go ahead and click on that. And I've got a couple of options. So you can see I've got some numbers up here. So I can scale it up by a scale factor of 10, i.e. I can multiply all of the measurements by 10. And for us, that just so happened to work. I can also click and drag in order to make it a different size. And I can see all my sizes down here. Now let's say I knew the exact size I wanted the X to be. I can go ahead and type in 20 and hit enter and it will scale as well. Uh, with Affinia, you kind of don't have any other option but to do uniform scaling unless you are scaling on the X, Y, and Z. You can unlock that or relock it. Once it's scaled, you do also want to rotate. So as we look at our tools, this one looks very similar to the rotate icon in MakerBot. And sure enough, as we hover over it, it says rotate. And as we click on this, again, we've got a couple of options. We've got some numbers here, so we can click on them to rotate that many degrees in this specific direction. So I can toggle to the X direction or the Z direction. I can also try to click and rotate that way for a specific number of degrees. Uh, with this, rotating we do again always want things to be flat um, so that it is nice to build now you can see that i am hovering over the top of my print surface here so i am going to want to go ahead and auto place just like we did in MakerBot. that way it's actually touching the print surface and just like we did in MakerBot, i do want to copy and paste this but this looks a little bit different than it does on MakerBot. So I'm right clicking and I can then copy and it says, do I want one copy or two copies? If I click on two copies, it adds two more um, when really I just want two total. So I'm going to delete one. I can auto place again to make sure that they are set up well for the printer. And then I'm going to come over here and this icon is our print icon. When I click on that, it is going to pop up with a couple of settings. They should be pretty standard. We shouldn't need to adjust these. And then I'll click on the print button. This is going to start slicing my print job and calculating how long it's going to take. And then it's going to send it to the printer. Again, with this estimate that it gives me, I'm going to add about five to 10 minutes. So this one's saying about 24 minutes. So I can expect for it to actually be about 30 to 35. Um, so that is definitely doable in the span of a single class period. Now, why might this print job take less time on the Affinia versus the MakerBot? There might be different settings that we have set up, or generally they are just different brands, so they will operate at different speeds. Uh, so we are just going to go with what ones are available and what ones you feel comfortable working on. We're going to take a look at one last brand of 3D printer, and that is the Ultimaker. For the Ultimaker, there's one in my class.